Y'all sounded great. It is a beautiful Lord's Day. We serve a wonderful Lord, and it is great to be here. Y'all, special speaker this morning. As you know, our people work tirelessly to engage this man and his wife. We'll see how that goes. Nick Blackstock, right over here. Nick, hold up your hand. Okay. Born in Atlanta. Somehow, he was able to convince the lovely, the talented, the beautiful, and the saintly Brittany Ray Fields to marry him. Actually, this is Brittany Ray Fields Blackstock with him this morning. They met in college, Georgia Southern. Nick went to grad school, UAB, in public health epidemiology and got a master's. He works for MedMind in Vestavia, a healthcare software company. He is a data scientist. Brittany actually is the office manager UAB career and development office and working on a master's. Nick is a bicyclist. He's got a lot of potential. The guy at the bicycle shop where he recently bought his bicycle said, look, if you just show up, you could be second or third runner-up in the Lance Armstrong look-alike contest. <laughs> Please help me. Welcome a man who is going to teach us something about the Lord today, Nick Blackstock. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I have a, you said you can't hear me? Can you hear me now? I can't see. Okay. All right, I'll work with it. Um, so today I want to talk about um, kind of a big topic. I'm sure there's, you know, a lot more that can be said about it. Um, than what we'll we'll cover in the next few minutes, um, but let's see, you know, what happens. Um, so the topic that I want to talk about is legacy. Um, so kind of a good starting point for me in diving into this myself was to um, get the definition of legacy. So according to Merriam-Webster, um, the definition in particular that I want to talk through today is as follows. Something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor, predecessor or from the past. So using this definition in a sentence, um, the, di the dictionary would say, um, the war left a legacy of pain and suffering. So, how, you know, how can a war leave a legacy of pain and suffering? What does that mean exactly? Um, I guess in my own personal understanding, I'd say that the influence and impact of the war are um, actually what's being referenced. So it's actually what determines that legacy, the influence and impact. Um, how are things surrounding that war influenced? What was the impact of everything or to everything and everyone around it? Okay. So influence and impact. Uh, we'll talk more about these words. Um, so I'll start with a, kind of an interesting story. Um, just on yesterday, um, I was at home in Atlanta um, for a funeral. My best friend, um, who was also the best man in my wedding, I've um, known him since middle school, like 13, 14 years old. Um, he had the difficult task of burying his mother on yesterday. Um, it was kind of an unexpected thing, at least you know to us here, um, God knows all. But for the most part, the family seemed to be doing well, um, so praise God for that. Um, but in my time spent at this service or this ceremony, this funeral, um, as is the case during most funerals, that at least I've attended, um, a few select people who thought enough of um, Dr. Beryl T. Mitchell, that was her name, um, they were able to share their heart um, through stories and reflections of time spent together while she was alive. So in sit sitting and listening to about four or five um, different people speak, I noticed uh, kind of a common theme they each were able to speak on different aspects of her legacy. 
Um, so to begin, she had a classmate, um, Spelman College, class of 1977, um, who got up and spoke. She spoke a great deal about remembering her good friend. Um, what stood out to me, however, were the descriptions of how Dr. Mitchell was always the one to give direction. Not only give directions, but she would plan and organize things, you know, no matter the setting, the event, or the occasion. Um, <laughs> the boss, if you will, as she was referred to, but never in a bossy way, always with love. Um, even if they were going to the family lake house for the weekend, um, she described how Dr. Mitchell would give assignments um, to family and guests alike <laughs> uh, once they arrived there, um, as there was work to be done prior to, you know, either enjoying the lake itself or all coming together in the evening for a large dinner. The speaker, go, uh, she went on to talk about some other experiences as well, um, but given who Dr. Mitchell was to her, at the end of speaking on what she shared with the congregation, she stated that even though her friend uh, has now passed, she still had a few more assignments to accomplish. These assignments weren't just about being busy and having something to do, yet they were more about bonding and communicate or communing with each other. Um, and these assignments were given to her by Dr. Mitchell, if that wasn't apparent. Um, so from what I could tell, she intends wholeheartedly to finish those tasks because Dr. Mitchell um, gave them to her while she was still here. Um, and uh, basically, you know, the classmate who was speaking, she was impacted and influenced enough by Dr. Mitchell to uh, want to fulfill that even um, in, in her friend's death, her legacy, okay? Another young woman arose to speak, and she stated that, she stated that at the age of 16, um, Dr. Mitchell took her in and became a mentor to her. Not only was she 16, but she was pregnant at the time of their meeting. Dr. Mitchell um, embraced her as one of her very own. Every day for years, this young lady would have dinner at the Mitchell household, spend family time with them, travel with them, um, all of these things. Um, a few years after her first child, um, the woman was pregnant again with another child. She also went on to have two more children um, as well, so a total of four. Um, due to certain circumstances in her own life, um, this woman did not have um, too much, uh, I guess, positivity other than being embraced by essentially a stranger at the age of 16. Dr. Mitchell preached education and family to this woman, not only in conversation, but obviously in, uh, with her actions as well. Those first two daughters that the woman um, spoke about, they went on to do great things. Her eldest daughter, uh, she ended up graduating um, summa cum laude from a university with a degree in <laughs> a very impressive sounding healthcare profession that I don't recall what it was. Um, the second eldest, she joined the United States Army as a lance corporal. Um, this woman in particular concluded um, her talk or you know her words by passionately ex expressing that she had no doubt in her mind that her own personal success nor the successes of her children would have ever taken place had Dr. Mitchell not sown the seeds of family, love, and education into their lives. This young lady and her daughters uh, were also both impacted and influenced, those two words again. Dr. Mitchell, um, she also taught special education at five different elementary, middle, and high schools throughout the metro Atlanta area. Um, she was also a professor of education at Spelman College, a member of the National Alumni Association of Spelman College, where she served in several roles, including um, a short presidential term as well. Um, she authored and had two children's books published um, that featured her very own grandchildren, who she loved dearly. She even traveled to, parts, to various parts of Africa on an annual um, basis for a, per a period of time to educate and do work with local YMCAs there. Um, even throughout their household, it's been a few years since I've been to their house, um, um, but I definitely recall there being, um, she had a host of African artifacts and artifacts from all around the world um, with rich history and culture um, that she would love to, to talk about and educate people on. 
Um, this is one of the things that she was very passionate about and wanted to share and educate others about. So education was a core part of Dr. Mitchell's legacy. Her impact and influence um, touched, you know, who knows how many people around the world um, through these things in which I've just described. So, um, again, talking about legacy, a lot of times we may hear the word legacy and simply think of things like um, a married couple having children, um, or more specifically, a father having a son in hopes that someday um, that child would get married and then continue to the legacy of, you know, fill in the blank last name, okay? Yes, you know, um, that's definitely important and, and part of what a legacy can be or is, but I think true legacy and thoughts about legacy that we as Christians should be more concerned with um, should reach far deeper than that. So let's look at some talk of legacy uh, in the Bible. So um, I'm going to turn, if you have a Bible, feel free to turn with me um, to Deuteronomy 6, um, verses 5 and 7, 5 through 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. The NIV translation reads, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Impress them on your children, okay? As Christians, our God should be at the forefront of the legacy we intend to leave behind. Um, I already feel like I have some work to do personally to prepare for such a great responsibility, an exciting responsibility, however, okay? Um, turning to another uh, scripture really quickly, Psalms 78, verse 4. Psalm 78, verse 4. Again, reading from the NIV. We will not hide from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders, the wonders he has done. Okay, we will not hide from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. What are we going to share with the next generation? And that saying the next generation, that does not necessarily mean once we pass on, once we're dead, okay? If you're in this class this morning, if you're in this room and I'm speaking to you, you can hear my voice. The next generation is already here, okay? Whether you're sitting to them right now or when you go home, when you go to your, you know, your family member's house, your children's house, your work environment, everywhere, the next generation is, is around us. We're here. So, again, on the topic of legacy, um, I definitely didn't choose this topic to talk about because I feel like I fully, you know, know what I want my legacy to look like and I have it all figured out. Quite the opposite. Um, I've known about uh, heading up this Encouraging Words class for a few months now, um, thanks to Russ. But never really thought too much about, you know, um, what I was going to say or, you know, talk about today beforehand. Um, partly because I probably didn't want to stress out about it <laughs> because, like, um, um, Justin talked about this morning, sometimes serving is kind of awkward. Um, serving in this way, speaking publicly, is kind of awkward for me. Um, I did have a couple of ideas that I came up with myself, um, but in the end, I think God and His Spirit impressed this topic upon me just yesterday, remember I talked about the wedding, I'm oh, sorry, the funeral that I went to yesterday so that I can begin to have the conversation with myself and with my family so that I can begin to take a look at my own life and figure some things out or begin to anyway. Also to share hopefully a, an encouraging word <laughs> with you all about legacy also. So again, what are we passionate about? What do we want to share with the world in words or in deed? How do we want to be, thinking about yesterday, eulogized in the end or remembered someday? You know, what do we want people to say about us? What type of spirit and energy do we have oozing from our pores 
that are impacting and influencing the people around us. Um, I also found it kind of cool this morning um, that towards the end, and Justin um, speaking to us, um, how he talked about um, his son and the the prayer that he prays over Jack and um, how he wants his son to grow up with the spirit of, um, what was it? Servanthood, right. Have a servant heart. But that he couldn't accomplish that if he himself didn't have that servant heart. Um, and he wasn't able to lead by example for his own child or his children, you know. Um, so, again, that's talking about his legacy, passing that legacy down to his own child. Um, so I'm kind of at the end here, and I'll, I'll just conclude by saying it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not possible for it to be too late for you to determine and work towards leaving a legacy that you and God will be proud of. Since God allowed you to wake up this morning and provided you the means to be here, I believe that he has a purpose for your life, each and every one of us here. Okay, I'm talking to myself as well. If each of us are going to have a legacy someday, I mean, of course, we have begun that process already. But each of us are going to leave a legacy, good, bad, or indifferent. We can be remembered for generosity, or we can be, be remembered for selfishness. When we die, people will talk about how we love them or how we neglected them. Jesus dying on the cross created the greatest legacy this world has seen, the legacy of love-filled action that leads to salvation. It's been given to all of us freely. So who are we going to pass it on to? Okay. So in less than 24 hours... <laughs> of uh, kind of reflecting on this. Um, that's what I have for you all this morning. So I thank you for your time and attention, and hopefully you were able to gain at least, you know, at least something to, to think about um, as it pertains to your legacy and how you Im impact and influence those around you, whether you know you are or not, and whether you're, you know, consciously thinking about it or not. You definitely are. Thank you. Thank you, Nick.